Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com and today let's paint a forest scene. And we're gonna start exactly where we left off in the last video with the flat colors. So first things first, today I wanna to make the background a little bit more nuanced than it is right now. Currently it's very flat. So I'll open up my background layer set, make a new layer, and then with a big airbrush here, I am gonna paint in sort of a darker blue at the bottom and then a bit of a lighter blue at the top. So that gives it a bit of a value fade. And I'm gonna control this effect with the opacity because I wanna tone it down a little bit. Okay, so now I am totally happy with my background and I'm gonna hide it. The next thing I need to do is paint my shadows. Well, the shadows are all gonna be in this foreground area only. So a really great way to sort of paint inside the lines is to use a mask on a layer group. Okay, so how do I do that? First, I'm gonna control click my flats layer here. Just click right on that thumbnail and you get a nice selection around the whole shape. Now I can go to my shadows layer set and apply that selection as a mask. This is great. Now I can set this to the multiply blending mode and then every layer that's inside of the shadows group is both going to be multiply mode by default, and it's also going to paint right inside those lines. So this makes things very easy for me. Now it's just a matter of carefully painting with both hard and soft brushes to get the look I'm going for. So one way I love to do it is to apply paint with the hard round brush, as you see here, and then erase with a soft eraser. And what that gives me is this nice soft edge. I can do another one here. And then if I like that, I'll make another new layer, paint with the hard round brush, erase away with soft, and back and forth in this way. Now, if you don't understand why you would use hard and soft shadow edges, I definitely encourage you to watch the video that's linked in the bottom of the post. But I'll just carry on in the same way with the entire rest of the canvas. So I'll add a little paint, erase away a little. Make a new layer, add a little paint, erase away where I don't want it. Add a new layer, on and on. And I'm gonna paint the rest of the shadows in the exact same way. So because it's monotonous, I've sped up the footage. But this is a great time to mention, keyboard shortcuts are your friend. I'm able to switch back and forth between my tools with ease because I've just memorized the keyboard shortcuts. And when stuff's repetitive, it makes it a lot more fun to just kind of get in that flow state. So if you're gonna work with temp layers like these, learn your shortcuts. So here I've used a single color for all the shadows in this image. And the fact that I've separated the shadows from the color information gives me some nice flexibility. So for instance, if I wanted to change the overall darkness, I could affect all the shadows at the same time. Here I'm just using the levels control, but there's a variety of different tools that Photoshop gives you to modify overall color, hue, or value. Additionally, I could go back to my flat colors and I could say paint more moss if I wanted to, and that's not gonna mess up any of those shadows that I've put in. So here that separation of color and shadow is really helpful for this sort of final tweaking. And for this image, the final tweaking I might want to do would be to put a nice little gray border around it with some sort of painterly edges. And then underneath that border, I'm just going to paint in some sort of a little bit of vignetting and some large scale airbrushing just to kind of pull it all together a little bit. You don't want to go too over the top with this. So I'm going to pull it back a bit, but that just kind of helps pull your palette together. And then maybe as a final touch, I could do a levels adjustment layer, which will allow me to work on the contrast of the overall image. And because it's an adjustment layer, I can toggle it on and off and I've not actually changed any of the underlying paint. So at this point, I'm happy to call this image done. Now, if you wanna paint in this way, you're gonna to have to understand a few of the basic principles that we talked about. You're gonna to need to separate shadows from the base colors, and we did that with layer groups. You're gonna to need to know how to make a layer mask on the shadows group, just to make sure you paint inside the lines. 
And if you want to, you can throw in an adjustment layer at the very end to just kind of do an overall contrast tweak. So if any of these techniques are new or unfamiliar to you, make sure to follow the links at the bottom of the post, and you can watch videos that explain them in more detail. So have fun painting, and thanks for coming to the site, guys.